Hi, so this is a video about how to write a creepypasta and the reason I'm being kinda quiet is that it's 5am and I don't want to wake up my neighbors but I figured I'm gonna do this right now. So it's kind of ASMR. Anyway, so for the purposes of this video, the definition of a creepypasta is as follows. It's different from other online horror stories in that it's made to be realistic and vague in such a way that it could be real. Although it's obviously not real to most people, there is this element that makes it, you know, like it could be real. Like some people might think it's real, depending on what they believe, of course. Less importantly nowadays, but still kind of notable, is that it would be spread in such a way that it's kind of like an urban legend, or where it's like presented as if it's real. Now, as a disclaimer, most of what I write is not creepypasta by this definition. One of the big reasons being that it's kind of boring, you just keep writing the same kind of things over and over again. And even more importantly maybe, is the anonymity that comes with it. It's just not that rewarding, I guess. And ultimately I think my opinion on this issue is that for a creepypasta to be a true creepypasta, so to say, is that it has to be presented as if it's real, um, as if the writer actually experienced these things. And this is why it's so much more effort to make a good creepypasta than just a horror story. In a way it's kind of like making a hoax. You know, you are writing this story on this forum or Reddit or an image board and you pretend to be this main character. Like, you can't just be like, here's the story. For this reason it's of course easiest on image boards, since you can do it anonymously without an account. The drawback on image boards is that you have to have an image that catches people's attention and you will get trolled a lot and you just have to basically put up with it in a way that is staying in character, which can be hard. Nothing can be stressed more than the importance of the readers suspending their disbelief, especially if you're posting it on an image board or Reddit, because the first few replies will define the success or failure of your story. So you have to be able to quickly respond to all of the comments you get in character in the same style that you wrote the story. And at least slightly you should probably anticipate the comments you will get, the kind of reactions people will have, so that you can respond to them without sounding like you're making shit up on the fly. And you don't want to jump the shark. By the way, this applies even on No Sleep, even though it's openly a fictional writing subreddit. Because suspension of disbelief is such an important part of writing a creepypasta and getting it out there. You can write a great story, but if people call it fake, that's the end of it. So the more realistic it is, the better. Which often means keeping it small. Keep it to the personal level. This means that you should never in a creepypasta have events that would make it to the national news. The only exception being, of course, countries with a lot of censorship. And if it's a first person narration, obviously the narrator can't die. And even in a third person narration you shouldn't use excessively literary language, unless it takes the form of like a report from something or whatever, you know? But I mean, if you're describing something that supposedly happened to a friend or whatever, you wouldn't be like, as he gazed into the darkness, he saw such terrifying sights that he could no longer control his bowels. Instead, you'd probably write something like, I don't know what he saw, but he shat his pants. You know, keep it relatable. It doesn't have to be too serious. And usually it's best to keep it kind of vague. A creepypasta can't have an omniscient narrator. Every piece of information has to have some kind of a source. And if you want to introduce some kind of speculation or deduction, then it has to be on the part of the narrator. And as for the writing itself, just write how you would write it if it had actually happened to you. And usually it's better if it's kind of retrospective and not happening at the moment. But there's one big but to that. Please don't compare things to other fictional things. It breaks the flow of the story and can break the immersion, and if you don't know the reference you'll have to do some googling or whatever, and that will break the immersion even more, of course. Sometimes it can be pulled off, but usually it just doesn't work. It's easier to get attention if you have a creepy picture to go with it, but you don't have to have one. And it should always be something original, or at least kind of original, so it's not like, you know, something you can reverse search, you know? And now comes the part where I write a creepypasta to go along with this video. I mean, otherwise you're just gonna be like, but you didn't even write anything. Okay, so I'm here on 4chan's X because I figured I'm going to post it there. It's a shit post, whatever. I mean, should I make this a green text? 
I mean, let's respect the legacy of green text, so be me. <laughs> no. Or maybe like... I'm just gonna, you know, make it relatable. Um, this is just gonna be a repeat of a shit post I made, <laughs> like last month, <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> Decide to <laughs> piss. I mean, no, that's kind of stupid. Um, um, it can't be an American thing because, you know, obviously, uh... Oh shit, that gif. I'm across a cave. The caves are always creepy. <laughs> They're gonna think this is like Australian. <laughs> oh fuck, mate. <laughs> That's not even how Australians sound. I can't do an Australian accent. Um, hobo. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Um, no, wait. This is actually starting to be get too real. Everybody has seen him in Roy Hubori, but I mean, he's not a hobo. I think, but like. Beer type creature, except it has no hair. No, I mean, it's fur, it's no fur. Run past it. <laughs> Would anybody do that in real life? I'm not even gonna question it. It comes after me. I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it doesn't even, <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> Whatever, it's Sonic.x activate. The furless fucker comes after me. Thank fuck, it's slow. Yeah, there's so many fucks in the story. Like, that's it. It's a shitty story, okay? Actually, yeah, I'm gonna open paint and draw a picture of it. Because, um, why not? <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> what the fuck is this? You watched this video and then you're like seeing this and it's like... <laughs> you're like, why? Would I even consider taking any advice from this dude? <laughs> no, it has to lean back though, because that, that that looks stupid. Yeah, this is like that John Lennon meme. It looks like Lennon coming in to say the N-word. I'm gonna make the feet like detailed. I mean, this narrator has a foot fetish. I don't, but like, I have nothing against it. Like, it's like whatever your fetish is, it's fine. I. <laughs> Why am I spending so much time on this foot? What would you do if you saw this? He's having a laugh. Okay, let's see. What happens when I post this? This is how you do a creepypasta. <laughs> this wasn't meant to be clickbait. This was actually meant to be a serious tutorial on writing creepypasta. But as usual, it kind of went off the rails. If you somehow found this helpful or useful or just entertaining, maybe consider liking, commenting, subscribing, I don't know, something like that.